Instagram, all that good stuff. I am Angela Petrilli. So, so grateful and happy you are here. This is the Riff Rundown with the awesome folks at Fishman. Yes, today I'm gonna to be teaching My Favorite Mistake by Sheryl Crow. One of my favorite Sheryl Crow songs. One of my favorites to play on guitar. It's, it's such a fun song. I was talking to the folks on Instagram right before this. Super, super awesome bluesy goodness in this song. Again, it's all about vibe. Now, I have my electric guitar today. If you don't have an electric guitar, totally cool. You could do this on acoustic too. It's gonna sound great. Um, so yeah, it's gonna be a lot of fun. We're gonna break it down into parts. There's an intro, there's a verse, there's a chorus. There's a cool little bridge thing. And yeah, we're gonna have some fun today. So what I've got here is my Strat. Got it plugged into a Blues Junior. We'll get into that a little later. Uh, but first off, before we get started, folks, let me know where you are tuning in from. I see Roadside Arizona, Ronald, thanks for being here. Where you're tuning in from and your favorite guitar pedal. Favorite guitar pedal and where you're tuning in from, folks. So, so happy you are here. Angela Petrilli, let's go ahead and get started. <coughs> okay, standard tune guitar. And what we're gonna do is, well, before we get started, I'm gonna go ahead and play a little bit of it. So here's the part we're gonna go over now. This is the intro of the tune. <coughs> like that it's great again just really really awesome stratty goodness here with this song so as you've noticed I'm using my thumb to slide into that B now this chord here that we are playing is a B minor 7 okay if I were just to play it straight that's how it sounds Again, a cool bluesy, yet also jazzy chord. It's great. So, my thumb, I'm hooking that over the seventh fret of the E string. That's where B lives, right here. And again, we're in standard tuning. So that's gonna go there. Now, when I do this, open E. See how I do that? Open E, go to the F sharp with your thumb, second fret E string and slide to the seventh fret. This is gonna take a little practice, but trust me, once you get this down, it's, it sounds really great, and you'll find that you use this in a lot of your tunes that you, that you play too. So, here we go, let's just do that bit real quick. And then hit your B minor. Now, first finger, place that, well it's a B minor seven, so let's, let's go ahead and do that. So you're gonna put your first finger across the seventh, seventh fret, D string, G string, B string, and E string, okay? So the notes that are happening here, that's your A, okay? On the seventh fret of the D string, you have your D here, seventh fret G string, you have your F sharp, okay? Seventh fret B string, and then your B on the seventh fret like that, okay? And then you add the thumb, so that added bass with that B. It's good stuff. So there we go. So let me put that back into that setting. Okay. So now let's go ahead and do that again, including that B minor, seven. Okay. It's a good groove. It's a good groove. This takes some time, but trust me, it's, it's worth the effort. You're gonna include this in a lot of stuff that you do from here on out. It's a great technique. Now, when we've got this riff here. You wanna ring a few strings here. Most predominantly, you've got the D string, seventh fret, okay? G string 7th fret, and B string 7th fret. Now, you're gonna hammer on with that third finger on the 9th fret of the G string, like that. 
Notice how I'm strumming this chord. Hear the sustain from that chord and then I go ahead and do that suspension with that third finger on the ninth fret of the G string. Like that. Okay. I'm gonna break that down from the beginning. I'm gonna go nice and slow and then we'll go ahead and build up the pace. Okay, so here we go. Cool, just like that, too. It's a great little riff. So, again, a few more times. Okay. Now, what you're going to do after that to complete the riff, upstroke on that seventh fret, so that B minor seven chord. Okay. So putting it all together, here's what we're doing. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that again. Now, if you'll notice here, doing a little bit of a percussive hit. Feel free to do that too. If you find it's a little too advanced at the moment, you can take it out, it's okay. All right, so I'm gonna do that a few times here. Here we go. Again, it's got a really cool groove. So again, think of that little drummer on your shoulder. Metronomes are great for this stuff. Keeping you in time. Bum, 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 bum. See how we're really locked in with that time? So be mindful of that when you are practicing this. And again, it's something I say in every one of these lessons. You can't play anything fast, you can't play slow. So take your time. Take your time, you can do this, okay? So let's go ahead. I'm going to do that again from the top a few times. Follow along. All right, let's go to the second part here. Again, this is my interpretation of this tune. I love to add those little Hendrixy, bluesy little licks whenever I can. And it's a really good way to lead into our next chord, which is gonna be an A chord. But in the meantime, let's go ahead and break this down. So we've got. This riff is going to be solely based on that D string and G string. That's it. So these are based on the seventh fret. Okay, if we're talking terms of notes, there's your A on the D string, okay, and there's your D on the G string. And what we're going to do with this really cool little lick here, keep your first finger down on that seventh fret of the D string and the G string, okay, just like that. Third finger, you're going to hammer on ninth fret G string but play the D string as well. So we're gonna isolate that, like that. That's how it should sound. And then release. Back to the seventh fret of D and G. Now for the purpose of this, so you guys can hear this, I'm sure some of you have noticed that I am hybrid picking this. When I'm doing this, when I'm doing it live, I just strum it. It takes a little bit of practice to know when to hit and know that you're hitting just the D and G string. Again, this is something that takes a little bit of practice, but is again, very much worth the effort, okay? Just like that. Now, 
with your third finger, go to the ninth fret of that D string and slide back like that. And just let it just kind of trail off. Okay. Just like that. Good stuff, right? Add a little speed to it. It sounds pretty cool. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and bring all of these little parts together for this intro. Again, this riff is based off of a B minor 7. Okay, so here we go. I'm going to do it slow and then I'll build up the speed. I'm sure you'll notice here too, I'm doing a lot of those percussive hits. See that? Now, it's a pick scrape with the right hand, but notice what's happening here with my left. I'm muting it. Right? It's not, it's a lot of nothing. We don't want it to be a chord because we're going to come back to that B minor seven anyway. So again, we want this muting. We want percussive. We want vibe, right? We want groove. We don't want to fill the space with a bunch of, at least not yet. We'll get there. Um, but keep this percussive too. That's what makes this intro so cool and so incredibly fun to play. So we're going to do here. Left hand, we're going to be doing some muting, okay? So here we go. Okay, let's go ahead and do that again. A little slower and then I'll build up the speed. Let's do it again to speed. Here we go. Okay, that's the intro right there, based off of that B minor seven. Okay. So now let's go ahead and move on to this verse. Again, this is my interpretation of this tune. This is one I have been playing for years. I love, love, love this song. And I love Jimi Hendrix too. So those of you who, who, who've been watching my videos and been following me a while know that I absolutely love that style of playing. And I like to incorporate a lot of those grips that he uses with his chords to play and songs that I really like to play. So in the verse, top of the verse, we're going to play an A chord. Now this thumb is coming back. We're going to use it again. Thumb hooked over fifth fret of the E string. There's your A. Okay. There's your root right there. We're not playing this chord as a bar chord. We're going to play like this. So we've got like this F chord shape here, like F major seven, if we're being like technical like that, right? So let's go ahead and break this down. How are we playing this chord? Thumb over the fifth fret of that A string or uh, the A note on the E string, fifth fret. <laughs> okay. First finger, we're going to put that on the fifth fret, the B string. There's E. Okay. Now your second finger, you're going to go ahead and place that on the sixth fret of the G string. Okay, that is your C sharp, that's your third, okay? Now what we're gonna do here is we're gonna put our third finger on the seventh fret of the D string, there's your A. See how they're octaves? A here and A there, okay? So when we play it, 
it sounds like that. Now, if you will notice, well, wait a second, you're strumming it, and shouldn't we be hearing that A string? Well, here's the thing. With this particular chord, when you hook your thumb over on that E, right, and play the bass right here, notice what happens to that E string. It's kind of muted. So when we strum, you don't hear it. And that's what is happening right there. Okay, so there's your A chord. Really, really cool way to play it. Just like that. So that's how we're gonna play it here. So we've got the tail end of that intro. Just like that. Downward strokes. Again, think groove. I cannot say that enough. Think groove, play in the pocket. Just like that. Hit that E root, E string, right? That's what's happening there. Now, you notice I'm not playing the high E at all. I'm not playing it. It stops. The chordal voicing stops at this fifth fret of the B string, which is our E. Just like that, okay? So I'll do that again, that, that strumming nice and slow. You wanna do a level two? Add some percussive hits in there, why not? Next chord, B minor. So here's our switch from A to B minor, the grip here. Keep the thumb engaged. We're hooking it. This time, seventh fret of the E string, there's your B. Remember A and B, whole step apart, folks. Yes, okay, so there's your B, seventh fret. First finger, go ahead and place that over the seventh fret of the G, B, and E string. There's your one, flat three, five. B minor. Okay? So when we play these two chords together, here's how this sounds. Now, you'll notice what I did there. A. I played that E string open and then put my thumb down on that seventh fret. Again, it adds a little more movement in the bass. If you find that that is too much for you, it's cool. Just go from A to B, it's totally fine. It still sounds good, it works, but if you want a little more movement in the bass, feel free to engage that E string open to get that really cool, get that really cool note in there, why not? And then go back, hit the E open, and then go back to A. Okay, I'm gonna do that nice and slow again for those of you following along. Okay, so that's what's happening there again. Do you feel the groove? It's almost like there's, there's this like percussive thing happening. It's a lot of fun. So there it is. That's something I do there. That is perhaps not in the song, but I think it's kind of fun to play. So I'll, I'll tell you guys what I'm doing there. This is a really cool inversion, okay? This is a D over F sharp. We hear these a lot in like Hendrixy style songs. We also hear it in. We see these a lot. That'll be another day, don't worry. Those of you who are paying attention, I will be teaching that song soon. Um, so again, quick aside. So, so here's what I'm doing here. It is a D over F sharp. Now, with my pinky, that is what's playing the F sharp on the ninth fret of the A string. 
and I'm sliding in there to that F sharp with my pinky finger. Could you do it with your third finger too? Sure, you totally could. Okay, so we're playing that B minor to A, back to B minor. That's the beginning of our D over F sharp. Now, first finger, we have played that F sharp on the ninth fret A string. Yes, we got it. First finger, place that on the seventh fret, D string and G string. Those of you following along in terms of notes, that is our A and that is our D on the D string and the G string respectively, okay? Like that. Sounds a lot cooler than this. It's just a different voicing of it. Okay, so I'm just doing a cool little suspension thing there. Sliding. Then what I'm doing, second finger, or third finger, ninth fret of the D string. Again, engaging both the D string on the seventh fret as well as the G string, like that. And just strum it, just those two, like that, okay? So let's go ahead and do that again, nice and slow. I'm gonna be doing the whole thing, A, B minor to that D over F sharp. hammer on pull that off with the ninth fret on the D string then go back to that F sharp ninth fret A string that's the riff really slow and then again trail it off slide it back okay here it is again Again, take your time. Okay, that's the riff right there. Again, I see questions, folks. This is, again, super, we're super live streaming today. So those of you who have questions, I will get to them. Write them in the chat. I'll be sure to see them, and I'm going to get through as many of these as I can. Again, these lessons are interactive, so I want you to want you to ask questions. If you, you know, whether it's about strings or the pickups, I'm using any of that good stuff. Put them in the comments, and I'm going to get to as many of those questions as I can. So right after we finish this bit, we'll go ahead and answer some of those. Okay? Again, this is super super fun. I hope you guys are are following along. It's a real fun one to play. So from the top of that A major, top of the verse. So now, what I like to do here, I'm going to give you guys two different options on how to do this. Sometimes when I play this, instead of playing a C, which is usually the next chord, sometimes I will do a C over E, okay? So, where the E is in the bass instead of the C. So you have the third in the bass instead of the one. Okay. And again, it's that same shape. It's that same exact shape as that D over F sharp that we just played. So really, everything is going back a whole step. Okay, just with that added E in the bass. Now, if you don't want to do that, you can just play a regular C. So let's go through that now. So. Mm -hmm. 
that's what I do there. C over E, how do we play this? Third finger, put that on the seventh fret of the A string. There's your E, okay? And your first finger, place that on the fifth fret of the D string. That is your G. And then your first finger is also covering the fifth fret of the G string. There's your C. So if we're looking in terms of the numerical breakdown of this C chord, you have your three, you have your five, and your one. Okay, again, Hendrixy style inversion. Okay, so that's one way that we could play the C chord, the C over E. If you want to play just a regular old C, Play it this way. First finger, bar it over the third fret, A, D, G, B, and E. And your third finger is going to be covering the fifth fret of the D, G, and B string like this. Okay? So we can do that. Now, I'm sure you're noticing I'm not playing it like this. I like to have fingers free. Your hands are much more balanced when you play this C chord bar chord this way. Ask any of my students. I always tell you guys to play it like this. Trust me, your fingers can do a lot more when you have these two fingers free. Trust me, trust me, trust me. Do some really cool inversions. Keep those fingers free. I know it's a hard grip, but it's a good one to know. It's a good one to learn, okay? So there you go. So. Here's option one with the C over E, let's we'll call it like the Hendrix style inversion, okay? <clears throat> so starting from that A chord. <clears throat> or version two, option two, regular C chord with the C in the bass, okay? <clears throat> C chord, I like the descending bass line a little more. That's just me, but mess around with it. Find your voice. That is a big thing with these lessons too, is I want you guys to get inspired and find your voice as a player. So I, I like giving you guys different options for, for these riff rundowns. So you can see like, oh, actually I kind of like this better. You know what? I want to do that that C over E. I think it was kind of nice. Or you know what? Maybe I want to play C up here. Up to you. Again, I'm just here to to guide you and to take on you know to to show you guys my take on this really really incredibly awesome Cheryl Crow song. So, so there we go. So the progression is A B minor, D over F sharp into the C over E. And then we go to a G chord. Again, I'm gonna give you guys two different options with this too. Here's how I like to do it. Now, I did like two different things there. Again, I'm taking, I. I I love the Hendrix style type chords. So a lot of it I'm throwing into this tune. So I go to G, G is in go. That is gonna be our chord, our G major. But here's what I'm doing. I'm doing two different voicings of it at the same time. And then doing that. So I've got this one. And then I've got that one. I'll do it nice and slow so you can see how I'm playing this. So from the D over F sharp. Like that. Now, could you stick to just one of these? Totally. But I like how it sounds when I do both. <laughs> so could you just... Just play the G like that, absolutely. Could you do this hammer on G? Whatever fits your fancy, folks. They're both great. So let's talk about each of these. Now, again, as you will notice, the thumb is predominant in the bass for both of these versions of the chord, 
okay? So for the first one, it's kind of like country. Right? Like John Mayer does a lot of that kind of stuff too. I think in Gravity he does this. Type of chord too. Like that, right? But what we're gonna do is we're using that for our G chord today. So thumb, third fret E, that's our G, okay? First finger, place that on the second fret of the G string. There is A, okay? Second finger, place that on the third fret of the B string. That is D, D is in dog. Then what you're going to do here, okay? And this takes a little bit of practice, but trust me, it's really awesome when you get this. You're going to hammer your third finger while still playing the chord. <laughs> like that, okay? You're gonna hammer on the third finger on the fourth fret of the G string. That is your B. So those of you keeping track, here's G, your one. There's your B, that's your third, and then you have your D here, that's your five. So there's just another version of a G chord, but we're doing this really cool hammer on from that A to the three. Cool. I love it. I love, love, love that type of chord. I use this often in sessions and when I'm playing live and again, just wanting to add really cool texture to songs. It's a really, really cool way to do that. Like that. And again, this is a shape that you could bring anywhere you want. It's a fun one. Okay. So that's the G that you can use there. And then you could use this one too. So keep the thumb where it is, it's G. No need, to, no need to move it, that's our base, we're great. First finger, place that on the third fret of the B string, okay, there's your D, there's your five. Uh, second finger, fourth fret of the G string, there's your B, B as in boy. Your third finger is being placed on the fifth fret of the D, which is G. So when you play all those, G chord, done. We're not playing the high E here. Could you? You could, but it's a little too like finite to my ear. I like to, I like to have that five on the bottom. But if you, if you wanna put the other G on there, you could. You totally could, it'll sound great. Okay, so here we go. I'm gonna play this nice and slow from that D over F sharp Hendrix E riff. And see how I'm using that base of that G to connect both of these chords? So I'll do that again. point two if that helps you then go back to that B minor riff from the intro okay so now the whole thing from the top then I'm gonna take your questions again those of you joining so so happy and grateful that you are here I hope you're having fun so from the top here we go <coughs> Here's the first bit, that is the intro and that is the verse. I'm gonna take some time for questions here. Again, those of you tuning in, my name is Angela Petrilli here with the Riff Rundown, the awesome folks. 
at Fishman. So, so happy to be here and to teach you guys how to play this song. Again, those of you just tuning in, let me know where you're tuning in from, folks. And your favorite guitar pedal. I want to hear it. I want to know what it is. So I'm going to go through some of these questions here. Again, thank you all for this awesome engagement and all the nice notes. You guys are great. All right, let's see. We've got some, let's see, ooh, we've got Belgium in the house. Thanks for being here. Fort Lauderdale, Florida. We got Seattle. We got Arizona. I love it. Scotland. Got the Bronx. Thanks for being here. We got Columbia. Thank you so much. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Glad you guys are enjoying the riffs. This is great. Um, ah, yes. Folks want to know what pickups these are. Let's talk about it. So these are the Fishman Fluence single width strat style pickups. Now, for this tune, I also want to mention, and I did this on purpose today, I have no pedals at all. This is Strat to my Blues Junior, my Fender Blues Junior amp. That's it. There are no pedals at my feet right now. The tone that we're getting is from these pickups. I love it. And it so, so absolutely nails the tone of the song. It's like, it's, it's great. So that's what I've gotten here. And I've got the ones with the battery pack that you charge. It's awesome. So you got a lot of playing time on these. They sound great. They are so quiet. I love playing this guitar on stage too. And for a lot of my one-on-one -on -one lessons, I use the Strat a lot. Again, I play it live a ton and man, it is super quiet, but when you want it engaged, it really, really cuts and it's just awesome. So let's talk a little bit about the settings that I'm going through here. For those of you who asked, I am on, so voice one, and as far as the pickup configuration, I'm on setting number two. So one, two is where I'm at here. I, li I, I like that position a lot as far as volume. I'm at about five on here, I'm at about five. So that's what I've got. And yeah, I mean, it's just, it's completely, <clears throat> it's completely nailing that tone. <clears throat> that bluesy stratty goodness it's just like oh it just gets it it's great yeah no no pedals folks it's just guitar it's the pickups and the amp and an sm57 to logic to all of you wherever you are uh all right so let's see we've got some string questions i'm using didario and yxl's lights for me that's what i use so so as far as electrics go it's tens yeah it's fun stuff fun fun stuff all right again this is great, folks. Hope you guys are having a fun time. This is such a fun, fun song to play. So let's go ahead and look at this chorus. Now, if you noticed at the bottom of the verse, I did that D over F sharp little riff again. I do this on purpose. Why? The first chord in the chorus, guess what? It's a D major. So it ties in very beautifully because you got a higher D chord, like higher register D chord up here. And then you go to a D here. Pretty cool, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and do that tail end going to that D chord. And again, I'm gonna hybrid pick this too. So from the back part of that verse just like that just like that so how i am plucking this with my right hand with the pick again it's hybrid picking here today pick is being held by my thumb and first finger I'm gonna use the pick to pluck on that D string and G string. Second finger is going to lightly brush light like a feather, okay? On that E and B string, like that. Just like that, and let it ring. And just hear the clarity of those pickups too, it's awesome. Just like that, just like that, okay? Play your D chord in that way. It sounds really, really good. Now you're gonna go to G. Hit the G on the third fret of that E string and brush with your second finger 
that B string and G string. Keeping your third finger at the D on the third fret of the B too. So notice that's going to be my pivot point from that D chord to that G chord. See how the third finger isn't moving? Use it as your pivot, okay? down we're gonna go to that F sharp so this D over F sharp now place the thumb on the second fret of the E string again this is how I do it <laughs> D to G to D over F sharp, nice and slowly. Here we go again, hybrid picking here, folks. Put that finger down, let me do that again. Like that. Not pretty. Again, one more time, then we'll get to our next chord. Next chord, E minor, strum it. And then go to C and strum that too. Just like that, okay? So now here's the whole bit. And with that C, could you strum it? Sure. Since I'm already doing hybrid picking, I like to pluck those. So hit that C root, third fret of the A string. With your pick, go ahead and play the E, which is second fret of the D string. And then with your second finger, again, lightly brush like a feather, very, very light touch on that B string and G string, like that. Okay, so here we go. Let's do that a few times here. Okay, so that's what's happening there. Now, the second part of this chorus is a really cool, little, tasty little riff that I just love to play. It's super fun. Here's how it sounds. Again, nice slidey, kind of country-ish. So let's play it. So, first finger, second fret, D string, that's E. Slide it up a whole step to F sharp on the fourth fret of that D string. Bring it back to E, second fret, okay? Again. Then release, pull off, D string. Open D string, again. Just like that. Now, if you'll notice with my right hand, I'm only plucking it one time. See that? You have enough energy from those slides to get a good strong note, okay? So again, just like that. Okay, now the next part. First finger, place that on the second fret of the A string. That is your B note, B as in boy. And then open D string again. So that's the riff. I'll do the whole thing nice and slow. And 
right there, right when you hit that D, make sure you play the chord, like real quick. It's a fast little change, but it sounds really great. So I'll do that now. Okay. Here it is in context. All right. So here we go. I'm going to do that again nice and slow here, folks, with, again, the riff in context. Here we go. chorus again this is stylistically this is how I choose to do it if you want to play it as just a straight C chord it's beautiful you can absolutely do that what I like to do as I'm sure you guys have noticed over the last two months I'm a fan of suspensions and, 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 and nice open chorus I think they're a lot of fun so what you can do is this and it's not too difficult those of you who are perhaps on the beginner side of things with guitar this is a really cool first dip into playing a suspension chord. So this C chord, right? We know how to play this. Lift up your second finger, strum the chord. So that's a C sus two, because you have the D string exposed. And then put your second finger back. So I won't commentate that. I want you to hear how it sounds. So here we go. See how it adds, just like this, that G chord that we did a moment ago. Not pretty. So thinking about, you know, when you're playing certain chords, think about, oh, maybe if I did it as a suspended two, or maybe even as a suspended four, and seeing if that works with my arrangement of the song, go and, you know, go and try and explore. Again, it's really, really, it's beautiful. That's what I choose to do with that C chord at the end of this chorus, is to go ahead and suspend it like that, okay? So again, in context, I'll go ahead and play that. intro. Okay, maybe not quite that, but you know, it's fun and you're there. Okay, so there's that. Think about the suspended chords. They're really, really fun. Okay, so let's see here again. We got folks asking about my amp settings. What are they at? I see <laughs> all at noon with a little bit of reverb. I love it. Shout out to Mark Agnesi. Miss you, buddy. Miss you, buddy, if you're watching, Mark. Miss you. Okay, so let's see. So as far as my settings on the Blues Junior that I'm going through now, my reverb's at two. Again, just a touch. I don't, I usually don't like a ton depending on the song, obviously, but for the most part, I, I don't like a ton. Just touch, just touch, it's good. My master's at three, I've got my mids at seven. I love a good mid presence in my playing electric, super fun. 
uh, bass is at five, I've got my treble at seven, I got the volume at nine. So that's what I have in this particular room. Obviously you're in different rooms, you're on different stages, things will change. But for this setting, this seems to like get the crunch that I want and, and, and the tones that I want and, you know, in position with the pickups as well, with the fluence. So <clears throat> it gets the tone I want, it's great. And again, it's a really nice, good sounding amp, affordable amp and is super, comfortable to play with along with the guitar and isn't crazy heavy either and I'm a big fan of tube amps those of you who know uh who, who watch my videos know that I just love them so yeah again just I absolutely love these these fluents it just again just really really gets that classic strat sound it's great so um I'm gonna take a few more questions here folks before we get to the little bridge part and that's that's the tune. That's the tune. It's been a lot of fun. Again, Angela Petrilli here with the Riff Rundown. If you guys are loving what you're watching today, be sure to follow me on Instagram and Twitter and Facebook and YouTube. All that good stuff. Angela Petrilli Music. You can get all the info at my website, AngelaPetrilliMusic.com. Be sure to follow the folks at Fishman on social. They're doing some really, really great stuff with Greg and Tom. And Ken and there's just so it's really really great interviews or podcasts are great and their products and I, I, I say this truly I've been such a fan of their stuff for years and years they help you find your voice as a player like I know these pickups help me do that I know my RS spectrum for my acoustic does that there's really really great products so be sure to check it out and you know see what see what works for you in the fishman lineup because man is there some great stuff so again thank you thank you all for being here thank you all for being here uh <laughs> someone's asking to flip your guitar over like Jimi hendrix al if i could play you know right-handed i would however <coughs> yeah i <laughs> I, I, I play right-handed, I can't flip it, but man, maybe one of these days I'll have to try and see if I can learn it too. <laughs> Flipped, that would be pretty neat. That'd be pretty neat. Okay, so let's go ahead and have a look at this bridge, some really, really beautiful chord progressions that are happening here. As far as the chords and how I am playing them, I'm keeping it pretty, like, nothing too crazy. Bar chords for the most part here, so the first chord is gonna be a B minor. Bar chord rooted on the seventh fret of the E string. Okay, so that part where, um, in that bridge, that's gonna be the first chord here. So regular old B minor, not a B minor seven. How we're gonna do this, first finger, place that as a bar across all six strings of the seventh fret. Okay, and again, make sure your thumb placement is good. I don't wanna see a thumb up here, it's gonna make playing bar chords much more difficult than they need to be. They're already hard enough. What I tell my students is this. Let me turn off the volume real quick. So with a Strat, see how there's a, the, the, this line, right? the skunk line or whatever you want to call it, right? Place your thumb in the middle of that when you're making a bar chord. Uh, use that line as a guide. Use it as a guide, so place it there. Don't place your thumb all the way up here. It's gonna add tension to, to your wrist. We don't want that. I want you to play in pain. It's never a good thing for anybody. So thumb right where that skunk line is is where I want it. And again, your thumb isn't gonna be perfectly straight. It is gonna be a little bit curved, which is fine. It's gonna have a little bit of an angle to it. That's okay, all right, so just like that. So first finger across seventh fret, bam, all six strings, cool. Third finger. Again, those of you who are beginners who don't know how to play this bar chord, we're gonna talk about it right now. Third finger, ninth fret, A string, okay? And your pinky finger is going to go on the B, which is located on the ninth fret of the D string. Play all six strings. I want them sounding nice and clear, okay? I don't want any, we don't want any of that business. Nice and clear, get a good grip. Again, the thumb and the first finger. Want a good, good, solid, solid grip. Next chord, B flat, major. So what we're gonna do there, you're at the seventh fret, slide this whole chord back a half step, sixth fret, and then place your second finger on the seventh fret. <laughs> second finger, seventh fret, say that 10 times fast. <laughs> 
So second finger, seventh fret, G string. And that's your B flat major chord or B flat, okay? So B minor. Just like that. Quick half step movement, okay? Then we're gonna go to F. Play it all the way up here. I know it's like the dreaded bar chord. I know, I know F is the dreaded bar chord, but keep playing it, it gets easier. So bring this whole B flat shape at the sixth fret, slide it all the way back to the first fret, making the bar, there's your F. So your F, A, and C, everything's taken care of there. Okay, next chord is G. Guess what? F and G are a whole step apart. In terms of guitar, two frets. Bring it up, G, B, and D, all of those three notes that make up the delicious sandwich that is a G major chord, it's all there. Okay. Let's play those four chords together. B minor, B flat, F, G. That's it. Now, adding a little more pretty strumming, I'll go a little slower. Really, really cool progression, okay? So that's what's happening there. Now in the next half, this bridge, okay? Next half of this bridge, B minor stays. B flat stays. We go to F, that stays as well. And we're gonna play an E minor. That won't let it go, so I'm holding on this way. It's gonna be that E minor. Okay, so here's the whole thing. part of the little like keys solo in that section that's our chorus so that D G F sharp B minor C that's the part that happens there in context here's how it goes continues on for that outro. So that's what's happening there. Okay, cool stuff, right? Not too bad, not too bad. So song ends on a B minor. So you do this. choose to play the B minor all the way here second fret great if you want to be like very climactic play it higher do that too so again up to you find your voice so those are the two ways you can do that again there are other B minors on other places of the guitar if you want to play them somewhere else totally can you can do there too okay many other places so up to you guys, let's see here. So let's go ahead, I'm gonna play an abridged version of the entire song. So all of these four parts, and they're, you know, so you can hear them in context, so here we go. <laughs> Thank you. 
mushroom. Like the, you get it. So that's the end there. Notice how it slowed down a little bit. End on that B minor. So again, I've given you guys a bunch of tools to, to play this tune. And again, think of it from that bluesy, like country Americana-ish mentality. There's a bunch of really, really cool stuff happening. Again, this is one of my favorite Cheryl Crow songs. I just love, love, love the guitar on this. Globe Sessions is just such a great album. There's a lot of great stuff. So those of you who weren't familiar with that part of Cheryl's career, be sure to check out that music. It's so, so good. Really, really great playing um, in on, on the album. It's a lot of fun to listen to. It's it's great. Um, again, thank you all for your, your questions. Let's see here. Just joining in, running errands. We'll check the full lesson on YouTube later. Yes, again, you can watch these anytime. They're up on YouTube. If there was something you missed or something you want to take a little more time on, you can go and rewind this and, and, and watch it. Again, these lessons are filmed live, one take, folks. So these are these are a lot of fun for me. It's a, it's it's a, it's a fun challenge to do these and to go over all these songs and ask you know and answer your questions and, and show you how I I play things. Again, this is my this is my take on the song and, and tones that, that are going on in the song. It's just so so much fun to play. So I really. Really hope you guys got a lot out of it. It was, sure was a fun one to teach today. Again, we're, that's that's the whole thing, folks. Um, those of you who have questions, I'll take a little time right now to answer a couple of them. Again, if you don't follow Fishman on social media, be sure to follow him on YouTube. You can find him there, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, all the good stuff. Lots of good things happening over at the Fishman camp. I'm very excited. Uh, yeah, there's some cool stuff. I can't say quite yet, but I'm very excited to uh, to be playing through some stuff that they're coming out with. Very, very excited. But yeah, and those of you, I know I'm getting a ton of questions on what these are. These are the Fishman Fluence Strat style pickups in here. I love them. The guitar itself, this is an American Deluxe 98, 1998, I believe. I've had this guitar a very long time. It's a great guitar. And put in those those fluence pickups they sound great so yeah it's it, again they just they, they nail the tone for for so many strat just again stratty goodness is like the, the the best thing i could say about these these pickups and, and just they, they really really get that tone that, that you want um out of a strat that iconic strat sound these will, will take care of it again it's been such a joy. Thank you all so much for your questions, your comments. I'm glad you guys are enjoying these as much as I am. I am also, I, I, I teach one-on-one -on -one too. So those of you who uh, would like to join the waiting list for, for my students on one-on-one -on -one Skype lessons, absolutely let me know. You can go to my website, angelapatrillimusic.com slash booking. All the info is there. It's a bit of a wait list, but would absolutely love to help you play some guitar. So that's all I got, folks. This was so much fun. I will be back next week, same time, same channel. Again, be sure to subscribe to us on YouTube, Fishman and myself, Angela Patrilli Music. Check it out. Lots and lots of good stuff coming your way. I will be doing an acoustic lesson next week, so have your acoustic guitar ready. I'm still thinking about which one I'm going to do, but I know it'll be a lot of fun. Um, again, thank you all so much. It is an absolute joy, pleasure, honor. I am so thankful and grateful every day that I get to do this and to teach you guys how to play. And, and it's, it's, again, just very, very thankful. So hope you guys enjoy this. I will see you next week. Take care of each other. Be kind. And just go play a lot of music today. Let's make the world a better place. All right, folks. Take care. 